Hey everyone, uh, real quick video today. Uh, I'm aware that I haven't done any videos for a while. I've been so busy. I have been doing lots of photography, but it just hasn't been conducive to do any videos. But Christmas is coming up. I'll be having a bit of a, a bit of rest and relaxation, and hopefully I'll get out and do some videos of shooting and some more editing. I've there has been a lot of shots I've done, and I will come out with some editing videos soon. But I just thought I'd do a quick video uh, to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, Happy Holidays and so on. Uh, and just to talk about a shot I took recently um, that uh, I was really quite pleased with. And that's this shot of these footprints in the snow. Now, the main question to ask here, and you might have guessed by the title of the, of the video, but if I show you that picture and say, you know, what was that taken with? Was it taken with my main camera? This is actually my EM1, because the EM5 is doing the video, but was it taken with a proper camera? Was it taken with what I use more and more, which is my Mavic Pro drone? The answer is, it wasn't taken with either of them. This particular shot here was taken with my iPhone 7 Plus. So it kind of answers the old question, can you do landscape photography with an iPhone? And what I wanted to talk about today is the fact that this shot is part luck and it's part knowing when to use an iPhone and when not. Now the fact is, it's luck because I didn't have my camera with me. I happened to be driving along and I saw this scene. Uh, lesson learned there, always stick your camera in the car. I fall foul of that even nowadays. But the beauty is I was able to shoot this with my iPhone for one main reason and that is that the light in this scene is very, very even. Now the cameras on iPhones have got really pretty good nowadays and they will hold their own, they won't hold their own against a, a DSLR or a micro, decent micro four thirds camera, but they will do a pretty good job, particularly if you want to share on social media. This, I would be happy to print actually, and I am going to print. The resolution on these things is pretty high, and as long as you don't want to do too much in terms of post-processing, and that's the key, you can shoot with an iPhone. You can't go very wide. You're not going to get the great effect that a 7 to 14 lens gets on the uh, Olympus cameras. Um, you can't zoom in too much. You know, you're very fixed. You've got to be careful to make sure that you get that depth of field from front to back. Um, but on the whole, you certainly can uh, shoot the right scene with an iPhone and get a very, very good result. The key thing here, as I say, is the, the fact that it's a very evenly lit shot. Generally, with a landscape shot, you're gonna have quite extreme between the sky and the ground. And that's why, generally, the thing about having a proper camera is you can put filters on it. You also shoot really good raw files, at really good resolution, so you can do a lot uh, afterwards in terms of bringing up the shadows, bringing down the highlights. You can do a hell of a lot that you can't do with a file coming off of an iPhone. So the first thing I would say for shooting with an iPhone, and the reason this scene works so well, is because it was extremely evenly lit. Now, there is still a lot of hit and miss about this scene. I had no idea whether it was going to work. We've got a sunburst. Was that going to work? You know, I've no, absolutely no idea. Or I had no idea. It turns out it did. Um, but it's almost impossible to know that. I, I almost kind of am glad that I didn't have my camera with me because I would have never really have tried. If I'd have had my camera, I'd have got my camera out. I'd have set it up, I'd put it on a tripod, da da da. You know, actually for this little experiment, uh, there wasn't supposed to be an experiment, it's really good that I ha didn't have my camera with me and I was just forced to shoot with my iPhone. So 
I'm just going to run through very quickly what I did in terms of post-processing and I have to say it's very little and that the even light and the fact that I uh, that I ha had very little post-processing to do are the keys to what occurred here. The important thing to note here is that also it is edited fully on a mobile device. I'm going to show it you on the iPad but it could have been easily edited on the iPhone directly. I actually, you can, you, with Lightroom on mobile, you can shoot it um, with, the mob, with the app and you get quite a lot of control. I didn't, I just used the standard camera app. I used the one time zoom, so I was the standard, standard zoom and I just composed and I did three or four shots and I was gone. I was in a hurry, just saw this scene. So, um, the footsteps incidentally are mine. I did make the footprints because I wanted that to lead in. So that is the only part of this scene that is manufactured by me. Just a few footprints going away. Um, this is going to be really quick as far as editing is concerned. The one thing I want you to take away from this is you, you, if you want to shoot with an iPhone and you really want it to work, generally I would say, and by all means, push the boundaries. Don't just stop with this. And I'm talking landscape photography here. Please don't write in and say, oh, but I do street photography. I do this, I do that. You know, I know they're great. You can do a hell of a lot, more than I can do, you know. Um, but in terms of landscape photography, if you really want to come away with something that you, you know is very likely to work, make sure the light is even. There's very little difference between the 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 top of the scene and the bottom of the scene. In fact, there is more difference now than there was. If I show you the original, uh, perhaps there's not more than there was actually. That's probably a lie. But this is the original and that is pretty good right out of the bag. Uh, this is the finished scene and all I've really done is warm it up a little. I'm just gonna run through the, the settings. So I've brought the shadows up and I've done nothing else with the with the light module. Literally just put the shadows up. I have just warmed it up slightly. Uh, as you can see here, I've gone to plus 31 on the temperature and I've gone to minus eight on the tint. That was just dancing around with other settings I did. I didn't do the color first. What I, will, what I did was I did the light first and brought the shadows up. I then went into the effects module and did a vignette. So I did minus 12 on the vignette. Uh, I sharpened it up a little um, and had to be really careful with that because it's not as high quality as the, uh, and because it, it was output as a, as a JPEG for me. So we're editing the JPEG here. Had to be careful, but it did stand. And if we go into these trees, you can see it did stand a little bit of uh, sharpening there. And then I masked it, uh, which, when you're working on the iPad or the iPhone, you literally just hold your thumb on the scene. Sorry, you move the masking slider first and then hold your thumb on the scene or another finger on the scene and that's how you mask it on the iPad uh, or the iPhone. Uh, and that is essentially all I did, apart from, and here's the thing, I did put in a graduated filter at the bottom here and I did a couple more things there. I upped the contrast. That's to get these beautiful lines of light coming, made by the sun through the trees. I just upped the contrast. And actually, on this part, I just brought the shadows back down again. I, I kind of conflicted with myself. So, but you know, what I'd done in, uh, with, uh, outside of here. Um, in other words, not in the graduated filter that I painted in. So this is just a graduated filter. We can move this up and down and you'll see there's without it and there is with it. Um, so you can see I've just done the shadows a little bit. I've done the whites, brought up the whites a bit and just knocked the blacks down a bit. Uh, that, and I've, and I've changed the temperature on this a little bit. That's my phone ringing, brilliant. Let's go again, that's the wife. Uh, so, and I've just uh, brought the temperature back down on this bit because the temperature was really to do the sun and so on the re that I brought it up and I wanted the snow to not look too warm. Um, and that's it. That is the extent of the editing I did on this. 
It's been incredibly well received. It got explored on Flickr. It's been a popular photo and it was all done with an iPhone. So if you're looking to get an iPhone for Christmas, uh, this is the 7 Plus. If you're looking to, if you're getting the 8, the 10, whatever, or any other smartphone, uh, you can take great landscape shots. You will do a lot better with a camera, a proper camera and learning how to use it. But if the scene is right, the world's your oyster with an iPhone. Have a great Christmas everyone and a happy new year. Uh, I'll be doing some videos in between Christmas and new year. Hopefully they'll probably be released in the new year and I hope to ramp things up in the new year. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Cheers.